Hello there, I'm Ian King. I'm a technology reporter here in San Francisco for Bloomberg's technology team. Um, I'm joined by Renee James. She's the CEO and founder of Ampere Computing. Um, Renee first sprang to prominence as a senior executive of uh, Intel Corp. And since then, she's left and founded a, a chip startup. Renee, thank you very much for joining us. I used two terms that for kind of 30 years were probably not really applicable in the same sentence, chip and startup. How is that even possible? And, and how have you got Ampere to the position that it's in with customers like Microsoft and, and Tencent in China? Yeah, thank you, Ian, for inviting me on today. Um, I would, you know, look, um, startups are really about a group of people who believe that there's something that they can build or do that's new and different. Um, I felt after a lengthy career in this business that the cloud was new, different, and redefining how we thought about what was required and what was possible for compute and um, got a bunch of like-minded people together and decided to go for it. Super fun. Right. And <laughs> obviously you're doing well so far. You've got some big uh, customer announcements out there, but historically, this was a you know this was a sport of kings. This is a an industry that's just required so much capital investment up front, just to even design chips. Never mind to to put them into manufacturing. So, what's changed about the industry that, that allows somebody like you to come along to see a, a niche and say, hey, we can do this? Um, several things. I would call it the perfect storm. Ian, we um, have made so much progress in the use of software and design tools to be able to um, assist people in rapidly creating products. We now have leading edge capacity available to design companies like Ampere um, that was in five, six years ago, wasn't available. So in order to build leading edge microprocessors, you have to have leading edge process and the best transistors. Those are now available um, through different manufacturers to folks like us. So the combination of the way the industry structure has evolved, the new um, capabilities that are available to design companies has really enabled us to build things at a, at a, at a pace that is that we've never accomplished before. We're on an annual cadence of products. We're able to build you know, world-class performance, leadership performance products. So yes, it is a game. Uh, it is has been a game of um, kings and queens, mostly kings, but now some others. Um, <laughs> but I think that the business is shifting a bit, and um, you don't have to. Uh, it, I'm not going to say that it's an inexpensive business. It is not, but it is at least available. Right. Historically. As we've said, this was a you know an industry dominated by large companies, and you know you worked for for most of your career the largest company of all. Um, how much of where we are is a competitive situation? Obviously, Intel at one point was close to 100% of the server chip market. Um, obviously, we've seen some shifts. We've seen some new players come in. We've seen a customer base that started to look at its own offerings. How much of your opportunity is, is a factor of the changing sort of competitive dynamics and how much of it is, is really just the technology has changed? I, I would say it's both. Um, the technology changes and shifts have allowed companies like Ampere to be possible. The competitive environment is largely due to the market shift. The market has changed. It, you know, the server business that I grew up with, and as you've pointed out, worked for an outstanding company for 28 years, learning a lot about microprocessors. Um, we, you know, that business was built out of client server and the entire shift in computing from mini computers to client server, um, not just the PC portion, but also the, the server enterprise portion. And the cloud, and when you look at it, because the software, and you have so many wonderful startups in the last decade doing amazing amounts of work, bringing new business 
um, capabilities, you know, the entire new economy, gig worker economy, all of that is born out of this shift to the cloud. But the fundamental hardware that runs the cloud, and this is true in any technology transition, you use what's available as you invent the next thing. But that hardware wasn't built for the cloud per se. And the workloads of the cloud, the structure of the software, the multi-tenancy, all of that is very, very different. And the demands for performance um, are different in, in, a, in a full rack data center. So right. we looked at it and we said, hey, look, we, you know, myself and some of the uh, initial early um, co-founders employees was, we know that there's a new hardware platform required. This is a big opportunity space and it's the definition of a new phase of compute. We should go work on that. Because that you can create, you know, the, the beginnings of the next wave of compute from that, from a hardware perspective. And we've seen this before, Ian. I would just comment, you know, when we see a new platform, we always think about a decade into it from a some perspective, we back up and we say, oh my goodness, all the growth is over. And we did that with cell phones when they passed over PCs, and they were about a half a billion units. We thought, oh, this is it because we thought the people who would have cell phones were all the people who had laptops and PCs. Not every person in the world, but it would be billions. And so we know from these different transitions, you just go back and, and plot them historically in technology, that about the 10 year point, it hits a point where it, the market becomes broad-based, it becomes definitional, and then a tremendous amount of growth comes after that. So that's how I think about the cloud and the opportunity for Ampere. Talk us through how you managed to secure some of these big customers like the likes of Microsoft. I mean, clearly yeah. massive operations, you know, these data centers are absolutely vital to their business and yeah. their future. And you walk along, you say, hey, I'm, I'm Rene, you might remember me from, from yeah. Intel. Um, here, I've got this, you know, I've got this new chip. What do you think? I mean, they're, make, they're placing huge bets on, on, on somebody like yourself to, to, to sort of allow you through the door and, and, and look at things, how, how do you convince these companies to basically bet on you? It's a combination of um, having a great product. You have to have a product that meets their needs. And in this business, in, in the high performance semiconductor business, it has to be best. That's just the price of admission. And one of the reasons maybe a lot of your viewers haven't heard a lot about Ampere is because in this business, you know, it, it doesn't benefit to talk. It benefits to build silicon, have it measured externally in performance, and it's kind of that show me the money kind of a thing. So the first things first, have a differentiated product that solves problem, real problems that customers have in their data center. Second thing is, is the level of support and service that you can give to a customer like that. I think our team had an advantage that a lot of new companies don't have and that we had the experience working with um, servicing, the service and support required, the software support required to really, you know, um, deploy a product like that at scale. And because we had that experience, we knew what it was going to take. We knew what the customer's expectation were going to be. Job one, build the very best product that solves real world problems for them. Job two, deliver on time, high quality, with a level of support required to, to win customers like that. We're thrilled. Um, it's a lot of work and we don't take it for granted that we, you know, every day we wake up and we know we need to focus really hard on continuing to build the very best products we can build. Right. We can't speak to a CEO of a chip company w without mentioning the, the topic of the times, the thing that's sort of dominating everybody's thoughts right now, which is obviously we've got relatively unprecedented shortages of supply in the industry right now, and that's affecting all kinds of, of sectors across the economy. What's your prognosis for if and when we get through this and when we return to some kind of balance between supply and demand, please? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. I think it really depends on the sector, right? There, um, whether you use leading edge technology or lagging edge, that's a semiconductor fabrication comment. Um, and you know, where you are in the supply chain. It, it, it will change, it'll be over the next, I think, 18 months. But there are some things that have changed for good. I think that, you know, we've seen a combination of shortages and price increases. And I do think that in, in many ways, some of the costs are going to continue 
to be at this level, even though they're clearly at shortage level, you, you see that, you know, right. um, arbitrage pricing, but I, I think prices have gone up. I think that's just, a, a it's gotten harder. There's a lot more demand. It is um, a, a expensive and takes a long time to, to lay in capacity. So while we may, as capacity is coming online in different segments of this very complicated supply chain, I mean, it's multiple manufacturers across multiple, you know, ge you know, geographic areas. As that capacity comes on in the next year to 18 months, we'll see easing of supply, but I'm not totally convinced the prices are necessarily going to go all the way back to where they were pre-pandemic. Got you. I mean, on a sort of related topic to that, you, you and I sort of have had a, an interchange on this sort of offline. And some of your peers, some of the other leaders of the industry are saying, look, this is, you know, this was speeded up by the, the pandemic, but this was an underlying theme in the economy, the digitization of the economy, the need for more and more semiconductors. This isn't just the usual boom and bust cycle. We're going and we're going and we're going. Others, somebody like Hock Tan at, at Broadcom, much more prosaic about things. Yeah, it's, it's great, but, you know, we're going to go back to GDP plus growth in the long term. What, what's your take here? Have things fundamentally changed? Are we going to see a multi-year expansion for the chip industry like we've never seen before? Or, you know, is this just a moment in time? Well, we saw we have seen this before. We've seen it before, but we've seen it kind of concentrated into one sector. I talked about this a second ago. We saw it in PCs, right? PCs went from, you know, 50,000 units to 350,000 units in, in, a, in a very short window. If you look back on it, it was five to seven years. So we saw it in cell phones. We saw it in, in mobile. Um, these growth waves come when a new platform or a new usage, new software usage comes into play. So I do believe the cloud is new. I don't think as many companies, I mean, notwithstanding the, the big software companies who run their clouds, like a Microsoft or, or um, you know, Amazon or Google or whomever, there's a lot of other people who could take advantage of the cloud that haven't, they're just beginning to figure out how to use the cloud, whether it's in the commercial cloud or on-premise using cloud capabilities on-premise. So I think there is a lot of growth ahead of us. Um, will it eventually you know, settle down? I'm sure it will, it always does in this business, but I think it's multi-year. Now, the thing that's different this time that it's very interesting and very encouraging, I think we need to consider is at the same time as there's a compute platform and, and, and because of where I come from, you know, we think hard about, okay, there's new need for computing, but think about this. Autos are now compute platforms, right? right. The, you know, what we don't know how to define the edge very well, right? But with 5G, things that weren't able to really be you know, high performance compute now can be. With products from Ampere that are very low power, you can put amazing compute at the edge. So all of a sudden there's other platforms that are taking off in conjunction with the core cloud build out. So I think that this is a bit unprecedented. I do think that, you know, there's, there's several years ahead of us. I'm probably a lot more optimistic than Hawk, probably because my company's <laughs> four years old, but. I've been through this before. You know, I would just say yeah. I've been through this before. I I understand what what you know the conservatism because semiconductors historically are very cyclical, right? And you have to be temper yourself. But I do believe we're in a growth phase. Turning back to Ampere for a moment, startups, chip industry, we've already covered that. Um, at the same time, you're dealing with some of the largest companies in technology, the largest companies in the world. If you look at market valuations, almost unlimited resources, companies who've kind of turned their attention to, you know, what they're doing on a component level and have their own chip efforts. Mm -hmm. How does Ampere fit into this in terms of where it goes in the future? I mean, th there's a lot of demand for people who can design chips, people want that. It's a, it's a rare skill set right now. Are you long-term independent? Do you get the, the escape vector in terms of the volume and, and, and the sales to be an independent publicly traded company? Or are you probably looking at a future where you're part of a larger company? What are you seeing there, please? I believe that there's always something that comes next, Ian. There always has been. There's always that next thing. 
And before the, the next, there's a lot of people, I call them the pioneers along the way, that forge the, forge the direction, get people excited, do some of the heavy lifting, but it's a little bit too soon. And I would liken that to a project I myself worked on a decade ago, decades ago at Intel that we would call Zoom today, okay? So right. you, can, you can be right, but you can be too soon. I think there is a need for a new CPU platform. I believe that or I wouldn't have started the company. I think that the industry needs it. The market is asking for it as you know, we see our, our customers growing. And um, I don't think that we're done and that all the big semiconductor companies that we're gonna have, you know, if you look at the list, there aren't that many, right? That's it, yeah. we're done. No, we're not done. That's not how it works in this business. There's always something that comes next. So we built the business. You know, I've I've always operated at scale. I understand what it takes to be a sustainable company, and that's been our objective from day one. Um, that's why you know we said we're going to build top tier performance. We're going to go and try and land some of the biggest customers, and we're going to get out of the gate and get moving as quickly as we can. It's an exciting. I mean, it's kind of crazy that after, you know, I've been in this business 30 years, I'm having more fun now than I've ever had because, of course, you know, it's our company. We're doing wonderful things. But that people are so excited about hardware again. Who knew? Right. You know, when we started yeah. the company in 2017, we had no idea people would be like, oh, gosh, semiconductors are hot. People really care about hardware. That's great news for a company like Ampere. It's really good. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely true. There's been an unprecedented level of interest from all sectors. And one of those sectors has obviously been politicians are starting to look at the industry like they've never looked at it before. And we've got this mm -hmm. whole debate now around where these things are actually made. I mean, it's been, as, as you know, not something that most people are worried about. We've had this global supply chain that just sort of happened in right. the background and produced results. Now that's in focus, whether it's because of the pandemic or whether it's because of geopolitical concerns. How do you see that playing out? Is it important that we have more chip production back in the US? Would that make a difference for a company like Ampere and your customers? Well, I think it would make a difference to balance the supply chain just based on what we've experienced during the pandemic. Um, for no other reason, let's put geopolitical everything on the, on the, on the shelf. For no other reason than to have a better distributed supply chain, which is better for growth, better for the industry overall, I think that we do need to have more balance. I um, am a proponent of the CHIPS Act. I think that we need to invest not just in manufacturing, but in the other steps of supply. So front end manufacturing wafers, what people talk a lot about, there's a whole bunch that comes after that. You get this big wafer, then what? Someone has to cut it. Someone has to put it onto something that someone else made. Then they have to test it. I mean, there's a lot of steps to it. We need to look at the full supply chain. But then there's one more thing. The semiconductor industry was invented in the United States, right? The inventors of the integrated transistor, one of them was the founder of Intel. And yeah. the entire business of, you know, designing and inventing these things is in and of itself a very unique and rare earth art that belongs here. So we have a whole bunch of R&D work um, that we need to continue to invest into. So, you know, government grants for R&D, the continued work in education so that we have enough people to employ and that people are excited to learn this business, super important. I, I had a young woman ask me if she should stay in physics. And I said to her, are you kidding me? We need more physicists. She's like, what do physicists do? And I'm like, you invent chips, come work, you know? So we need to start to link, you know, cool jobs to doing hardware and, and, and the education process. That's been a journey for the whole time I've been in the business, right? So I'm looking forward to um, everyone understanding how important this is. And, you know, semiconductors isn't just to the end, you know, our own industry. We're the underpinning of all this other stuff. It's the underpinning of, you know, every one of these other sectors as they digitize, healthcare, automotive, you know, you know, aviation, everything's been digitized for a long time, but yeah. you need semiconductors. Got you. Renee, we're just about to run out of time. So 
I want to do is thank you very much for making time. Uh, I know you're on the East Coast and I we am. appreciate you really making time for us and, and sharing your, your thoughts. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.